Hey everyone, this is a clip from a recent episode of the Men of Steel podcast, where we talk about Superman and Superman-adjacent topics. If you enjoy this clip, check out the podcast. You can find it at certainpov.com or wherever you get your shows. Uh, so we're talking about issue seven now, which is the bizarro issue of uh, of All-Star Superman. Uh, and it's a weird take where it's a lot creepier and it's a lot more preternatural. It's like this like Cthulhu-esque kind of like coming up from the darkness kind of element. So yeah, let, let, let's talk about where it kind of opens. Like Superman's letting his pet Sun Eater go uh, and then is all of a sudden ambushed and dragged into this cubic hell that is Bizarro World. And that's also at the same time while Earth is experiencing the horrors of Bizarro World, sending its uh, goopy folks to bizarro people. Yeah, this is very much Bizarro as like a zombie kind of concept yeah, in a lot of ways. Very much so. That was new. I was not expecting that. Because once again, this is my it was my first time reading that, and so like in the movie, you don't really they don't really touch on this at all. So I went from like really depressing dad death scene to space zombies <laughs> that turn you into clay people. <laughs> it's a tale as old as time. Yeah, and I was like, this took a turn. <laughs> I actually, when when I interviewed uh, Dwayne McDuffie about the the film uh, adaptation, I did bring up the lack of Bizarro, and and he said, I mean, and there were going to be lack of of certain things because for whatever reason, someone decided a while ago that the animated movies are going to top out at seventy minutes. Usually, they had seventy minutes to adapt All Star Superman. Now, a little bit later, they decided, well, we can't possibly cut the story short for our animated adaptation of The Dark Knight Returns, so we'll just make that a two-parter. And I really am still resentful that that attitude was not given to All-Star Superman or certain other comic book arcs, but here we are. So, you're going to cut out stuff anyway, but Dwayne also said, if you're going to cut out anything, the Bizarro stuff is kind of easier to make a decision on cutting out because uh, certain parts of the conceit, especially the language that the Bizarros use, that reverse speech pattern, is much more difficult to pull off and truly absorb when it's being done in audiovisual form. Reading, you, your mind kind of works to translate it and you can work at your own pace. Hearing people talk like that and having the scene continue without waiting for you to catch up can be very jarring. And so that was one of the reasons why that was one of the things decided that would be left out of the story. And that, and that makes sense to me. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we talked about that when we did our Bizarro episode like it's it, it is hard sometimes to translate writ the written word when it is written intentionally in a weird way to a spoken thing and have it not really hurt your brain so i do get that part yeah i mean the the recent superman and lois tv show when it dealt with its own version of bizarro was did kind of a clever thing of literally just when when the bizarro superman speaks it's just reverse dialogue as if you played a tape backwards and it was, it was sort of a new, fun twist on it, I thought. But with this, yeah, like, like you said, it's 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 both a familiar take on Bizarro because it's got sort of that cute absurdity to it. They bring back the... the Again, so much of the series has to do with Otto Binder, the, the Silver Age writer of, of many a Superman tale. Otto Binder, along with doing um, the stories of Superman meeting Atlas and Hercules and Samson... Uh, he he also created uh, the Bizarro World, the original idea of the Bizarro World, which was that Bizarro at a certain point just wasn't going to stick on Earth. It was too weird. It was too against his ideas of how the world should be. Bizarro being an imperfect attempt at cloning Superman. And so he he thinks in reverse and later on his some of his powers are even in reverse with ice vision and heat breath. And... Superman helped him find another planetoid and terraform it into a square planet. Thus, it's it's a version of Earth as imperfect as he is. Hetre, Earth spelled backwards. He populates it with a bizarro population. It's adorable. They have a whole code of conduct about acting in reverse and promoting ugliness and imperfection. And it's great. And we start with that. There's the big cube planet in the sky and then we shift it into zombie film and then keep on going into cosmic horror a gravity well is sucking the planet into the underverse but then also into depression 
and and it's yeah it's 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 one of those morrison ideas where i look at it and think that's so weird and yet it works so well it seems like that was always how it was meant to be it seems obvious in retrospect that a bizarre world would exist in a dimension of gravity heavy currents and emotional depression yeah and this like predatory nature to the planet like it's a cube version of earth because it's trying to imitate earth to make us not notice that it's a threat until it's too late like that kind of element of it all is like so creepy and weird and it, it feels so morrisonian in terms of like the the way they present ideas of like oh yeah this is a parasitic m- idea this is a meme that's going to kill you all this is a world from another dimension that is actively stalking our own and like imitating it and sucking its life out it, it is very much a hellish presentation Right, it is not a whimsical presentation, and in fact, the this is another big strength of Jamie Grant as a colorist here. But this is these are the only two issues that really have this color palette going on, and it is a hellish color palette: deep purples, dark reds, browns, grays. It's it's so different than the way we're presented everything else, and I, I love not only their approach to Bizarro, which is that you know Bizarro's number one is still out there, and there's a King Bizarro that's you know, like a horrible version of Superman's dad. But, um, you know, the real the real character here, I think, is Zabaro, which is presented as such a direct analog to Superman. But if 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 Superman were lost in like solipsism and isolation and just eternal inward looking, right? Like all that Zabaro does is talk about how alone he is and how different and unique he is and how people can understand him. And it's such a parallel to Clark struggling with his own death this entire time but now it's in his face as like a parody of his own grief and how perfect that it comes at this point in the story because we had the if you look at this whole series as a story arc you know we we start off with the new status quo I'm dying we then rise into Superman dealing with that new status quo being being in, um, inspired to find new adventures, new directions, try new things. Then we get to that halfway point of confronting the past and opening old wounds while mending them. And now we're sliding into the depression of, oh, just as I got a reminder of my younger self seeing things he couldn't stop, there are things that can bring me down. In, in a variety of levels. And we, we go into our journey into the underworld uh, that we'll have to rise out of again later. And again, it can only be accomplished with help, one of the big themes of, of this whole storyline. I mean, what, when you bring up, it's it's a hellish representation. Like I completely agree, and it, it's more than that. It's also, to me, old world idea of hell, of dark, cold, barren, things can't grow, things can't be built, or at least not properly. It's that old idea of hell and and a Hades underworld being more akin to desolate caverns than some place where you're roasted and there's light everywhere. Yeah, a place of shadows, you know, like the the Greek idea that it's your shade is your the spirit that continues into the afterlife. Um, and and bringing up Hades, though, I think is a good time. We didn't really talk about this last time, that the, this idea of 12 labors of Superman in this all. And there there are certainly strong parallels here to Hercules' descent into and pulling Cerberus out. Oh, absolutely. I mean, maybe it's not one-to-one, but it's certainly a trip into the underworld is very much like this mythic adventure that a lot of heroes, well, a lot of epic heroes really do. And this is this is Superman's version of that. Remember, if you like the clip after you're done liking and subscribing, check out certainpov.com where you can find more episodes of the show as well as a ton of other great shows.